you, the peanut gallery seems to think this is disgusting. This is beef tartare. This is a fancy French dish. This is how they make it. There's no, it's just someone in like a cool hat's doing it. I can wear a cool hat. You know, it doesn't make them any better than me. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen where dreams become food. Today's a very special episode. This one goes out to our sister wives over at Smosh, and yes, that is their official title in relation to us. So you may have seen the show Eat It or Yeet It. It is their dedicated food show where Garrett Palm has become a master of ceremonies of making the grossest dishes possible. And I used to view Garrett as a protege. When he was starting out, he would pop into the kitchen and go, Josh, what kind of fermented fish paste can we use? Josh, do you have malic acid? Josh, do you have thicket? But now Garrett has become the master and I his student because he made a dish so insane that I must try and recreate it in my own image and that is burger, but cold. Yes, it was a hamburger that Garrett put in a freezer for 10 minutes before feeding to Shane. Now I will try and perfect that dish and see if I can impress Garrett. Garrett, I look up to you. Call me son, please. Garrett, I need it. We've broken the recipe down to three easy steps. You can snag the time codes right there. We got a full written recipe. Is anyone gonna make this? No, don't, well, maybe. Anyways, it's there, right in the crotch. Go find it. Let's get cooking. The thing that I admire most about Garrett as a chef is the amount of psychological terror that he induces in his diners because I was once on Eat It or Eat It as well and I got a Twinkie that I could obviously see was doctored from the bottom and as I ate it, I was like, there could be dog food inside this, there could be glue, there could be wasabi, I have no idea. And then there was just Nutella. He scooped out the filling of a Twinkie then he put Nutella inside and I've never been more fearful eating a dish and that to me is the genius behind Burger But Cold where you just put a Whopper from the Burger King inside a freezer. However, I think there's a way to actually perfect this because I love beef tartare. Beef tartare is a cold beef dish. Once we went to a Korean restaurant, shout out to Agassi Kopchong, BTS's favorite restaurant. You like them? Can we put BTS in the thumbnail? Point is, we got a beef tartare dish there that was called Yukoi. Uh, that was like borderline frozen and it was really freaking delicious. So that is the inspiration I'm taking on this. We have some filet mignon. It's probably my favorite cut for tartare because it's very, very lean and nice and tender. And we're just gonna cut this into cubes. We're gonna run it through the very coarse setting on the meat grinder. Typically I'd like hand chopped tartars, uh, but for this I really want it to read as burger. But what? Cold! Cold! Yeah, so we're just gonna hack this up. We're gonna get that in there. Um, beef tartare, raw beef. People ask me often, Josh, why come you can eat, just eat raw beef? You can eat anything raw. You just can. Nothing stops it from going down your throat. You know, like if there's a will, there's a way. Um, is it safe? I don't know. Do you jaywalk? That's not safe. You know, you do a lot of stuff that's not, I don't, don't ask me about food safety. That's not my game. And there we go. There we go. Some nice lean ground beef for our burger, but cold. How many views do you think we'd get on TikTok if I just put my mouth over that and ate it all? How many views on TikTok do we have to get before we love ourselves? I think 100 million. I think 100 million when we get there. All right, so we got our beef ground up right here. And now uh, other things you add to a tartare. Typically in like a French preparation, you gonna take some nice diced shallots. That's really good. You want some crunch in there. Uh, I like chives. Chives are shallots, but greener and less crunchy. And so that's fun. A little bit of salt. You don't want to salt a tartare too much because then it's gonna start curing the beef. Um, also, I, I do really just like make my own tartare at home and I'm trying to be a little fancy boy. It's a fun thing to play with. Um, again, you gotta kind of do it at your own risk. Maybe like, don't get the value steaks from Walmart, but like, even if you do, it's probably the same stuff that you get from Whole Foods, but Whole Foods makes you feel better. You know what I mean? I'm gonna add a little bit of that. I'm gonna take some of them here. Pickles or cornichons, as the fancy people call them. When I went to France that one time, I was just like eating raw beef with every meal. It was pretty great. Probably got some weird French parasites. But I'm totally fine with it, because it's worth it. Just a little bit of Worcestershire, kind of splash that in there for seasoning. A little bit of yellow mustard, because we do want this to taste like a cheeseburger. We're kind of going to like a bacon cheeseburger themed tartare here, which is a phrase that I've never heard before. And that makes me very excited. We take some crispy bacon bits as well. Yeah. So this is gonna go into a bun, because I've never just had a raw meat sandwich. So that's a thing in um, Wisconsin, right? And uh, was it the cannibal, cannibal sandwiches? also known as tiger meat sandwiches in Wisconsin, but then like the Surgeon General of Wisconsin, which is a position that apparently someone has the honor of having, uh, just had to be like, hey, please stop doing this. Just a lot of people get E. coli every year. And they're like, I'll die before we pry the Campbell sandwiches out of my hands. That's what people from Wisconsin sound like to me. Then we're gonna whisk in an egg yolk. <laughs> that was my favorite form of don't tread on me libertarianism. Where it's like, I'll eat my raw 
I'll eat my raw hamburgers, god damn it. I think we need a little bit more fat coming in there. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more olive oil. Cause again, this is a lean meat and we do want this to be lubed up pretty well. Let me dump in all the shallots, screw it, screw it, make it your own. All right, now we're gonna pack it in a ring mold. We want it to be roughly the size of our bun here. You, the peanut gallery seems to think this is disgusting. This is beef tartare, this is a fancy French dish. This is how they make it. There's no, it's just someone in like a cool hat's doing it. I can wear a cool hat. You know, it doesn't make them any better than me. Talk to the people of France, not me. Now, this isn't a phrase you'd normally hear after making the beef tartare. Now we gotta make the ice cream for it. What's the appropriate condiment to put on a frozen raw beef hamburger? Is it ketchup? Is it barbecue sauce? Is it a nice aioli? Nope, it's Thousand Island ice cream because that's what we decided. When I say we, I don't mean to rope any of you into my terrible decisions. I've been to fancy restaurants where they serve a raw dish and they'll put like a horseradish buttermilk granita on top of it. So why not just an ice cream filled with ketchup and pickles? I think this can actually work. I'm like talking as if I'm just trolling this dish. This is a man trying his best at the thing he has worked hard at for his life. That's what you're watching now, which is crazy. So let's just, let's do it to it, Lars. Uh, we got a bunch of egg yolks here. I'm gonna add some sugar, start creaming that into the egg yolks. I don't know if this is the right way to make ice cream. This is how I do it at home, I don't know. Just like kind of cream it, and then we're doing a custard base or a creme anglaise based ice cream. We have equal parts, whole milk and cream uh, heating up in what's called like a pot or whatever, and <laughs> I'll add the rest of the sugar to that. We're gonna try and temper it in, create a little custard base. I figure, I figure, here's where we're at in the mindset. Mayonnaise, egg yolks mixed with like stuff, like fatty stuff. So we're kind of getting the mayonnaise out of a creme anglaise base, and then we're just gonna add a whole bunch of ketchup to it. This has enough sugar in it, uh, and a little bit of salt, a little bit of acid that it shouldn't mess with the texture of the ice cream, and then pickles, cucumber Persian ice cream, my single favorite ice cream of all time. Anyways, this is probably gonna work, I don't know, let's see. Uh, so we're heating that up, we're gonna temper that into the yolks right here. I got really into making ice cream during uh, the quarantine, but then I made one ice cream that was so decadent that I had to stop. I made a, a it was like bacon fat pancake ice cream. I, I cooked a bunch of bacon and then I cooked the pancakes in the bacon fat and then I steeped the pancakes in the milk and then strained it out and then added candied bacon and like a bacon fat caramel swirl inside. And it tasted too much like bacon fat and pancakes, which is what I set out to do that somehow it turned, it was like the portrait of Dorian Gray, like I ate it and I just started melting into myself. I had flown too close to the sun. I don't think I've, I literally have not made ice cream since then. Cheese, wait, hold on. There's another thing I can do. I forgot, I forgot. This is what we're also gonna do. Cheese on a burger, when cheese is cold, it's bad, because it's hard. However, hard cheese when it's cold is harder, which is good, so we're gonna get hard. So <laughs> I'm making what's called a cheddar cheese frico. Uh, and so a frico, Parmesan frico, is the classic thing. You basically just bake cheese until it's nice and crispy. All the oils kind of like seep out of it. And so all we're gonna do, we're just gonna put little cheese mounds. Little cheese mounds, put it in the oven, 350, bake it off for like half an hour uh, until it gets nice and crispy. Then you pull it, cool it down. It'll become a nice crispy cheese disc. This, can you see it, Maggie? It's cheese. Here, I come to you. Yeah, look at it. Uh, we uh, graded it our ourselves from a block. Yeah. It's yellow. Yeah. We're gonna put this in the oven. 350, let that go. Uh, and then that's it. This is all, there's no more toppings in this burger. I wanna go nice, clean, simple, rustic. Really wanna impress Garrett and Shane. Uh, I know Shane loves food, cause he'll come up to me in the office and be like, hey, uh, have you been to this restaurant? And I'll be like, nope. He'll be like, oh, it's good. I'll be like, cool, man. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this cream and I'm just gonna add a little bit of it to this here egg yolks. And then that sugar is gonna insulate it. It's gonna gradually bring it up to temp. This proper cooking technique, right? Tempering, that's the thing. Uh, if you added the egg yolks right to the scalding liquid, why wouldn't you just add it in cold though? Whisk, 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 add this into the thing and then gonna put it back on the pot. And then we're gonna cook this, reckon about three minutes. Uh, whisk constantly, uh, otherwise yeah, you egg can scramble. However, even if this does scramble, you just run it through a strainer and like it'll probably be fine. Once you throw it all in there with a bunch of sugar and ketchup, you, you, you're not even gonna notice. Might as well add the other crap to it right now. We're adding some smoked paprika in there because I like that inside a special sauce. We're adding just a little bit of salt because we do want the salt to carry through. This is gonna be a nice savory ice cream, which also if you're just making ice cream, salt to me is like the biggest ingredient that people miss. Uh, a nice salinity to your ice cream is gonna add a good little pop. A little bit of horseradish for fun. Horseradish and beef. Come on, it's fun. 
Is that not your idea of fun? Thanks, Chris. Chris knows it's fun. A little bit of Worcestershire, a little bit of red wine vin. This is gonna be freaking wild. A little bit of, a little bit of pickled cucumbers, and then finally the ketchup. Ketchup ice cream could work. Because here's the thing: tomato, as we all know, is a fruit. If you would eat strawberry ice cream, strawberry is not even a berry, mind you. Strawberry is uh, what's it called? Like a crafactinated, crafactinated. Where are we at? Where are we at? This is getting nice and thick. I was kind of eyeball it. You could probably temp check it at some point. I just kind of go until my shoulder gets tired. And then I'm gonna take this, pop it back into this here bowl, whisk that up. There we go. Pop this into another bowl to make it more colder. Uh, typically, you want your ice cream base to be cold before you dump into an ice cream maker. Me and Nicole had an argument about this. I think you just throw it in there, you know? It's like how if, you, if you're making a turkey, you can just throw it in the oven, just, just frozen, who cares? There it is, and <laughs> now that it's nice and nestled in there. Uh, this is a great way though to cool down custards, or like uh, if you're making a hollandaise ice cream, you know, or like <laughs> like a Bernays ice cream, you know, one of those. Uh, what are the other what are the other hollandaise derivations? Um, Still hot. Oh, uh, Bernays, you said. Yeah. Sauce Courchon. That's hot. That sounds hot. What's uh, in it? Sauce What's that? Uh, Gross. Sauce Sauce Colbert, Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert got his own damn Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Now he got his own French mother sauce. Yeah. All right, so now that our mixture is cooled down, Nicole, I'm very interested. I just later, later, we'll talk at lunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this ice cream base and we're gonna dump it into our ice cream machine. And then we're just gonna pop the lid on. Trevor told me, how, cause this is a new ice cream machine cause I stole our last one to take it home. Uh, and then it's gonna lock in and then please go. There it is. Now we just gotta wait like in a couple, like in, what, like 40, 45 minutes? The old one took 45 minutes because I know because I stole it. Ice cream's done. We should have just thrown the raw meat into the ice cream. No one's ever done that before. No one's ever made beef tartare ice cream. Someone needs to, someone needs to stop me. Where do they give me a YouTube show? This is a bad idea. All right, ice cream's looking pretty good. Let's just jump in there, give it a taste. It's. <laughs> It smells like when you leave an In-N-Out bag in your car on a really cold night, which is to say kind of refreshing. Holy shnikes. I've never tasted anything like that in my life. It tastes like mayonnaise, but there's no mayonnaise in it. But as, as I said, we kind of made a man. What the hell, dude, what is, Jesus. In terms of like shotgun methoding the food frontier and just making all the things that there are to be made, throwing caution to the wind, middle fingers to God in the sky of what could actually work, we have created something entirely unique here. Let's freaking rock and roll it, man. All right, I'm putting the little cheddar cheese frico on top of our raw meat. Now I'm gonna, how do we do it? No, hold on, this is what we need to do. We need to take the bun, we need to flip that there. I need to flip this here. Need to do one of those whoop de doos Need to put cheddar cheese frico on top. Golly, what have we done? Which god do you think would be most likely to forgive us? Vishnu? Ice cream is a little bit soft, that's what we want. I'm just gonna take that and pop it. Hold on, let's get a nice little, nice little side here. Pop some ice cream on there. There we go, again, the ice cream is the condiment. In case you, I drooled on some ice cream. My mouth is so confused that it's just like, it's like you're sneezing to get the poisons out of your body, right? It's like my mouth's drooling. It's like, we don't know what happened. So just like start flooding the gates. And kind of shred that around, mound it up a little bit and uh, pop a little burger on top. There you go. There you go. Burger but cold version 2.0. Eat your heart out, Garrett and Shane. Smosh, eat it, eat it. A student became the master, became the student again. What the hell did we just do? The bun's nice and cold. We have held this in the freezer. Ice cream soft and melty. That's the texture I want. I have sensitive teeth. This is gonna be a friggin' nightmare for me. It's so good. It's so good. 
I think we could have made the ice cream a little less sweet, but this just eats like a really nice tartare dish. You get the soft cakey brioche. I love toasted, I love tartare on toasted brioche. The cheese gives you a nice crunch. You get all the bacon, you get the Thousand Island flavor. I would just eat, I'm just gonna eat this thing. Like if left to my devices, this is going down. No, it's stupid good. The mythical kitchen graph goes like this. It's like you got stupid going to the right, and then you got ah, kind of good going up. This has the highest right and up value of anything we've ever done in this kitchen. That's huge for us, because we're dumb. Now, we make good food, but this is both. Like big both. Ice cream raw meat. Come on, we did it. We climbed the mountain. We went to the top. Now it's only downhill from here. All right, I'm gonna make another one of these for Shane because I think he needs to have the glory of it fully prepared. Let's go spork his A double hockey sticks. Shane, quit pondering your Dr. Pepper options and eat this burger but cold version 2.0 optimized. Oh God, okay. Yeah, I'm not happy. Well, I am really happy about it because I think it's pretty cool. Um, so what we did, burger but cold, right? Iconic, Garrett put a burger in the freezer, funny, yeah. funny. I wanna see if we could actually take that and make a really dope dish out of it. So here we have a bacon cheeseburger inspired beef tartare. You ever eaten raw beef? Uh, no. You're about to. A little cheddar frico, okay. so it gets crispy, and then Thousand Island horseradish ice cream, all on a frozen brioche. Somehow this is better than what Garrett made. I think it might be, dude. I, I'm really stoked on this. Just Do pick it up and try it. Yeah, I'm not okay. gonna try and spork it in your mouth. Okay, I'm just gonna see. be here supporting you with the spork. Just trying to. I'm gonna fiddle it. your undercarriage okay. with the spork. Okay, I've got it. There you go, All I'm right. fiddling. Okay, uh, I'll, well. What are you thinking? That's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? No, yeah, it's not bad. Who would've thought? You wanna take another bite? No, all right. It's... I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just wondering if you want to. I think I want to. Right? All right, here I go. All I oh, ate no. for breakfast this morning was raw beef and ice cream. And it worked. Wow. Yeah. No. Garrett, <laughs> stupid, I'm good. Tell me I'm your real dad, not Garrett. Well, um, you're my real dad and not Garrett? Yeah, that's right, Garrett, you heard that. Uh, man, th thanks so much. You, do, I mean, would you would you make this at home? I don't think I'm capable of making this. Yeah, it's honestly pretty stupid if you really look at it. How long did this take you? Long time. Oh. Days with yeah. ice cream. Yeah. Wow. I've All been... for this, this is the payout of the bit. That's, well, thank you, Josh. No, this thank is, you, Shane. This is fantastic. Um, and Garrett is the worst. Sucks. Yeah. We hate Garrett. Yeah, yeah, he took just a regular burger and he made it awful. Yeah, this I blocked is... Garrett on Twitter for four months and I don't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. I, I like couldn't remember. Trevor was like, hey, Garrett slacked me and asked me why you have him blocked. And I was like, oh, I think he said something about avocado toast I didn't like. And that was it. <laughs> he so, just yeah. tweeted anything. Yeah, that dude, thank you. And thank all you for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes. On your hashtag Dreams Become Food, Shane, where can they find you? Oh, I'll just be, uh, I'm gonna be hiking some mountain yeah. soon, so you just gotta find me. Also, I'm on Twitter. Super I've heard of Shane. It. Yeah. It's a mountain in Trevor its ruins my life there, so. He does, yeah. really, really. Trevor owns him the way that I own Garrett. It's a real psychosexual cluster fluff around here. All right, see you next time. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t shirt form. Get the Palm Heel Strike tea now at mythical.com.